People, my voice is gone, let me do that again. People, deluded, I'm back again. I hope you're all doing well and safe. I hope you're all fine. I hope you're all in good spirits. Now, I've been sitting here this evening making the content, doing some stuff for you lot. And I've just done an actual video on Awa. I know I'm late to the party with Awa and, you know, in relation to him while on international duty with France offering his own opinion as to, you know, just what his future holds and whatnot. Um, it's funny how life works because I was on Twitter again, just by chance looking at Arsenal stuff. And again, the great Twitter account that'd be ZR AFC, who, like, like a number of them accounts there, just covers everything, you know, in relation to our and whether Arsenal did, how much we did try and go for him, we'll never know because it seems like it's taken another twist. We heard we never placed an offer, we placed the offer, we, we had a bid rejected, we bid it a second time, we didn't bid a second time, Ornstein, Julian Laurens, ESPN, just any journal at Sky Sports, everyone's had their own say as to that stuff and whether Ulas had a part to play in it, whether Commissions was the reason it broke down, whether Aroa, whether Arsenal, we'll never know until Aroa says this is what happened, his agents say this is what happened, or the club, Arsenal and people connected say this is what happened. For me, it is what it is. I would love the guy. I was enticed by by him being here. He's very much an Arsenal player and everything we've had, you know, and obviously the French and Arsenal connections connections and what we need in a team. I wanted him, but he's not happening now. It's not happening. I'm hoping Janet can happen. I don't think Janet is possible. Next summer, I think it's a myth. You know, hopefully it can happen. Either way, I want us to move on. Hopefully there's other targets in mind. The world keeps spinning sort of thing, people. It's as simple as that. But him himself, well... ZR, that, that the account that ZRAFC is himself better yet, um, he, long story short people, apparently, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find the journalist, but there's a journalist who, who has something to say in relations to Arsenal's future people, um, I'm trying to bring it up for you here, but I think you lot can see that, right? Yeah? Cool. This is this this journalist, and he seems to be an official journalist. I don't know too much about French football, but he claims a lot of things, people. Well, he hasn't said much, but he claims first and foremost, Arteta spoke to Hossam Arwa and convinced him to join Arsenal. So first and foremost, my manager done his job. You know, he probably convinced him of how he wants to use him, how he can improve him. Obviously, played on the club's historical ties with French with French players, and whatever reason, you know, his own plans. My manager's done what he's what he done to convince Saka, Bamian and Martinelli to sign new deals, William to come to this club, Gabriel to come to this club, Partey to come to this club. He did the same. So Arteta's done his job. He's got more of a say in transfers. He's done his job. He's the manager. He can only identify targets, speak to the targets. Dot and I's crossing T's are people around him and above him. So he's done his job. Um, <clears throat> convinced him. Apparently, though, Arsenal's initial offer was rejected and Edu said he would speak to Kronke and return with a large offer. Is this even... Remember we heard that we bidded Gwendozi and money. It, is, did that happen? Did that not? When that when allegedly that... Because that was the first rumour in relation to our war. I could be wrong, people. Well, around that period... Did we act? Was this when it, this actually happened? It weren't the Gwendozi thing, was it? Was it this sort of thing that he that he's just said? People, was that the first sort of con content? People, um, that said, you know, because we did hear Janino and Edu started talking. Nothing came, but they're talking. You know, if Edu said he'd return with a larger offer, could that? I can see how that correlates, people. But he then said, so he said he tracked to the Cronkies and returned with a large offer. But apparently, but in reality, he he mostly played the watch and ended up explaining. So again, we tried to play a waiting game. He probably waited to hear legit news from the Cronkies. Maybe he was just stalling. But one reason or not, it didn't happen. And apparently, he said he ended up explaining to the players' entourage that he had not yet contacted Cronkie Sports and Entertainment for reasons of jet lag. So again, I'm not too sure on the period, but you know, Edu might have been jet lagged or not done what he needed to do. Apparently, between Edu and between Arteta and Edu, the will to recruit the number eight of Lyon was perhaps not exactly the same. So maybe Arteta wanted it more so than Edu. Did Edu not rate him more than Arteta? Again, it's important to remember this is just speculation. You know, again, I don't know. Um, this is just Nabil adding his own two sets. I don't know. But he's went on to say Arsenal and Lyon never actually entered into direct negotiations. Lyon were expecting a slightly higher offer before entering into discussions. It never came. A fortnight before the end of the Mercato, Arsenal, in fact, abruptly cut off contact with Leon. So, again, that's the most important paragraph. And, again, I don't know if there's any credibility. Did we ever enter into um, initial negotiations? Was it just 
bartering and talk because you know you have initial talks before you sit down and actually dot I's and cross T's, which does correlate to what we've heard. We did hear Arsenal and Leon broke contact, so that is also true. In relation to if we ever entered or not, I'm not too sure. I can, be I can believe, I have reason not to believe and say we did enter. I have reasons to believe we wouldn't enter because Arsenal seem like a club will only enter if first and foremost we can gauge the feas feasibility of a deal and in fact we can get it done when we say we're going to get it done. It's like the Partey thing. You know, we must have put the feel, we have put the feelers out for years that Partey was opening to coming. You know, we knew that with his release clause it could be done. We clearly were able to find some agreement or broad agreement with his with his team so then it was a it was a case of time again so who knows you know either way it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound good because it seems like we was moving half-hearted over a, forget our world but over a role we needed to get done like at a push for me you know early on i would have liked us to see you know what we can't either bring in our what or say you know what f off our and your team we can't do this thing let's bring in the next man we'll never truly know but it is the latest bit of frustration people because it does based on this it don't appear that it's the cron case fault apparently you know um, it just seems like there was jet lag or, you know, communication problems actually on Edu's end. And this is, in the same way, if it's footballing results, we're going to criticise Arteta. In the same way, I'm very vocal on the need to get rid of Stan Kroenke and Stan Kroenke having issues. You know, if this is true, same way I praised Partey, you know, I mean, the Partey signing with Edu and whatnot and how hard they worked. You know, is this the our one? Is Was there a reason for Edu actually not being on it? Did he know from early there's too much peas involved in this? We can, there's something else we can do. We'll never know. You know, was it Edu who wanted it more than Arteta? You know, we know Arteta was at City and he was on a list and he saw him play and, you know, we need that role. But we'll never know. I'm just playing devil's advocate and throwing bare scenarios. We'll never know. Us common fans will never know until Arawa, Leon. And Arsenal tell us exactly what happened. And I know Arrow was offered some thoughts. You know, he said it was more or less in, 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 not without saying it, but he's more or less said, more or less gave the impression that he's staying for one more season. He said at least one more year and that there was, it was either Arsenal or nothing this summer. So there's got to be an offer. If not an offer, there's got to have been something in place to give him encouragement that he was going to move clubs or give Arsenal this encouragement. But either way, it didn't happen. Leon are the real winners because they've got a player to immediately, like with the pay, they've got two players that were linked with moves away, staying and helping them for their quest of glory this season. You know, for our what? They have to. They will sell him, and they'll make a lot more money if he has a better season. For the pay, you know, it depends. In two and a half months, he talks for free. He could agree a move to to Barcelona from January. So I'd expect Leon to sell to 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 let the pay go in a cut price move, just to not lose anything in two and a half months. It I, when it hits January, but I don't know that. Like I said, Leon are the only winners. It is frustrating from an Arsenal perspective because for me, it's all about the list of targets. You know, you go in, you spend all year knowing an area you need to identify. And you you go through hundreds of, pe of of profiles, that gets whittled down to about 40, then 20, then 10. Then from that 10, you see which ones are feasible. You know, it probably goes down to seven or five. And then you try your luck and you see, OK, in this five, he's not going to happen. You know, this one can't happen. There's three proper targets. If we don't get this one, let's go get this one. And if we can't get these lot, we get this. Um, there's that. Personally, I believe, you know, maybe if we got some outgoings, we could have been a bit more adventurous in bringing in our ones and overpaid for players, you know, because Lord knows we paid, we've overpaid for several players that are in this side and, and, and have been, you know, there's not too many value for money signings. I'd say Gabriel and Martinelli, Gabriel, the centre half and Martinelli will prove such. Saka's free, so it is what it is, uh, only training costs. Aubameyang's justified his price tag without a doubt. Tierney, you know, early days, justified his price tag without a doubt. Let's be fair, Leno didn't cost the most and he's all right. Um, you know, other than that, you're kind of scratching your head. Like, I like Xhaka, but, um, but has Xhaka given value for 40 million? Or have we spent a number of periods, you know, kind of work, trying to work out what he is? You know, most people have him down as misunderstood and he has been, you know. We, we paid 50-odd million for Lacazette. I'm not saying he hasn't been a vital player. I haven't saying he's been a great player. But has, has it been the Lacazette we thought we'd get in in 20 goals minimum? Dare I play devil's advocate further and say if Lacazette was the Lacazette we thought we'd get in, would Aubameyang be at this club? You know, Mustafi, was he the 35, 40, 40 million pound player we thought we was getting? Lucas Perez before that? You get what I'm saying? You know, there's been very few value for money signings since we've moved to the Emirates. I feel Santi's one, Alexis is one, um, off the top of my head, Tierney already throw him in there, Sagna throw him in there, um, you know, Koscielny, Giroud, relative to how much they they cost and what they went on to do, value for money, you know, um, Aaron Ramsey as well, let's not, let's not cap, 
you know i'm saying very few and listing bare but obviously when you can when you add these in and then compare to the all that like, if we did every signing made since we moved to the emirates and then boom you know that you know the list would be smaller in it admittedly when i started talking there was more of a name than us i'd say arshavin for sentimental reasons um you know but there's a bag of players that haven't been up, up cut up to task really and truly you know even players that we have down you know even I don't want to say it, man, because a certain ex-German international plays up front. I really got a lot of time for him, but it's a bit of an unpopular opinion. Like, did he justify? You know, he wasn't bought for mad money, so he's not relevant. But did he? Did we get as much use as potentially we should have? Um, so did, I do. So yeah, it is what it is. But it's upsetting with our thing, you know, because he's a player. I don't like to, you know, get attached, but he's a player for me, anyways. Growing up with all knowing previously, just until Emre, Arsene Wenger's Arsenal and the French ties. He's very much that. You know, he's a good player. He's got scope to improve. You know, I would have liked Arteta if he's away from what I think of our, you know, Arteta likes him. That's his man. I would have liked him to to get his, his first targets. But these things happen, you know. I think we've, if there's a chance, of course, I think the club will go again. And if, if we can, let's try and get it done in the summer. If, if it can be jan done in January, of course, I'd love it to be done. I don't think he moves anywhere in January. And I think the task is gone. Um, what I would like to see over the next 12 months now, because missing out on targets is a thing. We, we couldn't get up on McCann, we got Gabriel. Can we now identify another midfielder to go into that role and be that sort of creative, you know, marry the creative and the athleticism? Because that's what you need from your modern day midfielder. Can we go out and get that? Can we identify that? Whether that costs 40 million or four pounds, you know, can we do that? Can our scouts go and do that? And I know we've got rid of scouts. I know with COVID it's tougher. But, you know, we, we've spoken on using stat DNA a lot more and these analytical tools. I'm pretty sure the manpowers that you could dedicate to using that would be more effective. Because I know for a fact with these scouting tools, there's all different criteria you can pick. And some of them even have features where you can roll up similar players. Now, I'm not saying do this football manager thing, but, you know, Edu's spoken of less people, more video analysis and using stat DNA. Can we use that to identify identify targets and spend this next year or so really scrutinizing them how good are these players how good can they affect us you know can we consider the the, the league they're, they're leaving from you know in the case of Torreira he never settled can we learn our lessons from that Gwendozi behavior issues can we learn our lessons from that and use better scouting with that you know because finding the players on stat DNA is one thing you know we're going to need to watch them over a year you know I want to see I, I can't see it but how are they away from home how do they react to defeat? How do they react to when things are going wrong? How do they react to mistakes? How can they, you know, is there a system that makes them thrive more than the others? What are their weaknesses? Okay, how do we improve their weaknesses if they potentially was to come? How do we hide and mitigate them immediately in the squad? You know, nothing to do with John Terry because he was a quality centre-half, but he had issues playing in the high line. So Jose would do things so that wouldn't be exposed. And there's many players that, there's nothing wrong with having a weakness. Everyone has a weakness in football and in life. Do you get it? So can we, you know, we need to really scrutinise these things, people. Um, it is what it is because there's still a lot of work to be done in the side and there's still a lot of transformation that needs to take place, really, especially in terms of outgoings because the outgoings are affecting what we can do in terms of incomings. But I've got nothing more to add. I'm going to get out of here, man. It's been a lovely 13 minutes with you. Ironically speaking about our, again, folk, but... It's a minor. Um, on that note, please make sure you hit the like button, people. It don't cost nothing to hit the like button and it don't cost nothing to try help DG bro grow the brand and score higher up in the YouTube searches and whatnot. Please make sure you've hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'd love to hear your opinions, so don't feel any sort of way and don't be shy. Comment your opinions under this video. I'd love to hear it. Different opinions makes the world go round. More importantly than that, please take care of you and your loved ones and make sure you stay in good health and return soon, man. Don't go missing too long. You know I've got content for days. On that note, people, DG, God bless, I'm out.